Hello, welcome back to the spider's web. And as you can see, I've done some more scratches on it. I've added a couple more of the Aquila um, symbols on it. And I've put the salamanders. Um, the, the, the salamanders logo on the back and then gone over with a little more of the scratchy effects. I've not done any on the underside as yet, I want to try and get the majority of the work done um, for the camera. I can do, always go back and do more and more and more of this, which I will be doing over, the, over time. But this video I wanted to just spend a few minutes where I glue on the missile launchers like so and now it looks the beefy thing that it's supposed to be how's that? I see uh, one of me the missile missile warheads on there need to be touched up a little bit, um, which I suppose there's nothing stopping me doing that now. So it's the uh, was Daka red. It was a use for that, wasn't it? And then gone over with the blood red for highlighting. So that's not a problem. I can easily just pop some more was Daka on there. Up some more was decker on there, and up some more was decker on there, and we can just touch up here as well. There we are. That's that done. So, apart from all the little fiddly scratches and stuff on the bottom that I need to do, that is the salamanders. In fact, let me just raise the um, raise the tri raise the camera, so you can see properly. There we are. How much of a big beefy thing does that look? You saw that coming towards you on a, on a nice Sunday afternoon stroll. You'd be uh, having a panic. There you go. Okay, so that's that bit done. Next, we have the most important job of all. Okay, so what did I say we were going to do? Oh yes, we we're going to be going over this with Steel Legion Drab. Um, it's not going to be a complete dry brush, it's just going to be um, just going over knots, just picking up most of the um, raised areas of this but it's not going to be just the raised areas that's getting done I'm just going over and just lightening the um lightening the uh, the rocks oh what class oh, lightening the painted cork shall we say oh, okay rocks um so we're gonna lighten this all um Make it look as though there is light there. Um, that it's actually the the colour of the rock rather than a highlight. That's what we're trying to. That's the effect we're trying to give. This is the colour with the um, 
the dark brown that we put on earlier being the shadows we'll go over the base as well with it because it's all going to be done um, it's going to be some oops, we don't want around the edges to be painted like this um, this is going to be it's just going to be kind of mud a mud base round rocks and I'm going to be putting as I say some lichen or whatever it's called on top of the the rocks around the around the stand to disguise the fact that I've made a mess of it because um, that's the thing you can always do if you've, if you've made a mess of something you can always find some way of worming your way out of it well with the models anyway I'm not going I'm not going to say that it's now an allegory for a real life it's uh, it's just when you're doing things like this you can get away with a lot more if you make a mistake because it just shows how creative you can be in trying to rectify something that you're not happy with So there's um, there's not the paler brown done, which is this steel legion drab. Next, we're going to be doing a bit with screaming skull as a dry brush. Um, I need to go over the edge of this again when it's when it's all done I want the edge just to be um, quite honestly the dark brown I do not want any of this light brown on the on the, the actual edge of this so once I've finished it all I say it's going to have a coating of well, well I'm going to re go over the on the edge with the um, Rhinox hide again. I want to make sure that everything near enough has some of this Steel Legion drab on it. Um, okay, that's that done. Next, as I say, we'll use the Screaming Skull. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And the Screaming Skull is, as I said, a dry brush and it's just going over the top edges. And down. Don't try and go across with this because you want it to look as though the light is coming down. And obviously we can go over the uh, textured base. Well, so this is the important one for this. It's it's got to look as though the light is coming from above. And the only way we can get that effect is by moving the brush in applying the paint in a downward stroke if you start doing it upward stroke it's going to be in pl the paint's going to go on in places where it shouldn't be so I say stick with going downwards except when you're on the top obviously then you've got to go um, you've got to go across it But you can see that if I'd have gone that way, I'd have hit the bottom of it and it wouldn't have looked correct. It would have looked as though there's light coming from down there and there isn't any. And we're also trying to make it so that... It looks as though there's multi-levels of light, as it were. Hence the reason we put the dark brown, then a mid-brown. I 
open your phone in this because I seem to have lost myself again. <laughs> okay. And don't worry if it doesn't look quite right because there's going to be static grass and, and other bits and pieces attached to this. As I say, I'm going to be putting um, oh, what you call it on it, the lichen or whatever it's called over the top. Next, we want to use a little bit, and I mean a little bit of white. This is a very, very, very pure dry brush and it's just going over the raised areas. There is not much brush on the paint or even paint on the brush. It's just the areas that are on the top. Sort of flat, as it were. Shall we say the horizontal areas? And that means all the horizontal areas, not just the ones on the very top of the model, but the ones part way down as well. And so we do not want everything. Being done like this. And what we're next going to do is something a little strange. I want to see if this actually works. I have been told that if you put... In fact, I've not been told. I was watching a, a video on YouTube. I think it was Mini Girl who was doing this. And she put super glue on the bases to make it look like wet mud. So let's have a try and see if it does actually work. In a few places we'll just put a few spots of super glue um, to make it look as though there's a puddle or make it look a little bit slimy. I may be doing this all wrong because I can't remember the I can't remember fully what went on in the video. Unfortunately, my memory isn't absolutely fantastic. I think in the only video I said I got the idea for the scales for the <coughs> missile launchers from uh, oh, where did I say it was from? Um, oh. The resin placement that Games Workshop dealing with. Um, oh dear. I can't remember. I can't remember what it's called. But I didn't see it in there at all. I've just seen different. I have seen it done, but I can't remember where I've seen it done. Where it's just been. Um, scale effects to the Forge World, that's what I was thinking of. Um, I thought it was Forge World where I've seen it, I've been on the Forge World site to have a look and it's not Forge World because I can't see anything there that actually resembles what I've been trying to do. So I know I've seen it, so I've, I've seen it somewhere where, where it scales. It could actually be on the back of Vulcan Hastan's cape or some such but actually I had more super glue in this than I thought I had. I didn't think I had much left. But then I'm gonna have to get some more before I do. I'm going to see how that dries. Um, 
and then we're going to go over the base this area all in PVA glue I think see if that will give it more of a, a shiny look a wet look rather So it looks as though there's pockets of mud there, or pocket plumes of water. We'll see how that works, and then we'll come along and do more um, ujits as we go. Um, oh, what's that? We'll put some more um, static grass on it as we go, because we'll have. To, but for that, I'll have to use the PVA glue. But we'll only do that when it's all dried. Um, but for now, I'll just go over the very edge of this with the Rhinox hide in the hope that I haven't put any super glue along the edge or too much towards the edge. Then I get it on my brush. I don't think I have, but knowing me, anything's possible. But then again, if I have, I've already got, an, I've got another one of these brushes anyway, so I'm not incredibly worried. And as I say, I've got a very cavalier attitude towards my brush, towards these brushes, for some reason, for some strange reason. And the price of the brushes, I don't know why. Because they're not what you'd call cheap, but uh, what I'm going to do now is bring back and he's done. I say, apart from a very small, a few small pieces here and there, um, I'm just going to pause the camera and change angle. And then you can see it's from the side. There we are. It's not a very steady for film video. Oh, I'm sorry, my hands aren't very steady. But that's what we have so far. Just angle it round. There we are. On the rock base it's looking quite good okay so that is all I'm going to be doing now for the standard updates once I've got the um, oops once I've got the lichen on here I'll be doing a video showing off the entire um, salamander's army So, until next time, take care, God bless, and bye for now.